Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Let's talk again just a little bit about the foundation we've been laying. Things that we need to know that really are very important foundational things in our life before we can really grow very much spiritually. I think a lot of times people try to grow up in God and they try to be real mature and they want to get off and get a ministry or something. And they really don't even have the foundational things solid in their life. For example, the first thing that we all need to know is that God loves us unconditionally. And I mean, it needs to become a very personal thing to you. Not just a God loves everybody. Oh yeah, I know God loves everybody. No, God loves you. And he loves you unconditionally. And he will never love you any more than he does at this moment right now. His love for you is perfect. He is with you all the time. That's the basis for us not having to live in fear. If God is with me, then I don't have to live in fear. Another thing that's important to understand is Jesus understands me. I love that one. He understands all my little weirdness. Jesus understands me and he is committed to me. Never leave me nor forsake me. He's committed to every one of you. And he will never give up on you. God will never, ever, ever give up on you. Another thing we need to know is that I am a donkey that sometimes falls in the ditch. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got in the ditch for a few minutes this morning. Has anybody else been in the ditch since last night? Thank God we can say, here I am, Lord, your donkey, lift me out. If you weren't here last night, you wonder what I'm talking about. Jesus gives the example of how the donkey fell in the ditch and even on the Sabbath day, he went and got the donkey out. He will always get us out of the ditch. I don't have to be perfect to get God's help. Oh, doesn't that sound good? I don't have to be perfect to get God's help. I just need to love him and I need to be willing to keep growing. How many of you want to grow in God? Well, of course you do. If you didn't, you wouldn't be taking a Saturday morning to come out here and do this. I'm sure most of you have a lot of other things that you could be spending your time on and things that you're still going to have to get done sometime with the rest of your day. But you've taken time to be here, not just to see me because I'm on TV, but because you really want to grow in God. So congratulations. The next thing we need to realize is my sins are forgiven. Everybody say, my sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. Say it again. My sins are forgiven. Now close your eyes and just say it like you're taking something into yourself. My sins are forgiven. Come on, one more time, all together. My sins are forgiven. Hmm. That's a sila. Pause and calmly think about that. Here's another piece of good news for you. God is not mad at you. Say, God is not mad at me. Now let's just take a moment and ponder that. Say it again. Mm, one more time. Say, He loves me. <laughs> now these are the kind of things that will heal your soul now having that foundation and you you have to have this foundation before you can go anywhere <laughs> so if you don't have that foundation then you just need to take a year or so or several months or however long it takes and you need to you need to understand some of these things that God loves you your sins are forgiven He's not going to give up on you. He's with you all the time. He's got a good plan for your life. You need to know that you've been made right with God through the blood of Christ, not through your own perfection. Now we're ready to grow. So, I want to change. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. You want to change. You want to be everything that God wants you to be. So how 
can I change? How can I change? I well remember the days when I, in the beginning days of my walk with God, my serious walk with God, when I would go to something like this and I would hear some great preaching that was something that I needed to do that I wasn't doing. Let's just say, for example, it was about the mouth and how important the words of our mouth are. And well, I had a big mouth problem and so I would go away feeling not convicted but condemned. And there's a big difference. Don't get mixed up about conviction and condemnation. God convicts us and His Word will convict us. But to convict us just simply means shows us that we're doing something wrong. But it also will always help lift us up out of that and change us. So conviction is good news because if I live in the dark and don't even know what's wrong with me, then I certainly can't ever fix anything. And I had many years where I did not know that I was the problem. And I realized the other day that actually I didn't have nearly as much frustration. I didn't feel nearly as bad about myself before I started studying the Word as I did after I started studying the Word. And I would venture to say that that's a lot of people's experience. Well, why is that? Well, simply because before I really started studying the Word, I wasn't facing any kind of th truth. I thought everything was Dave's fault, my kids' fault, my past's fault, my neighbor's fault. If they would change, then I would be okay. But then, because I didn't understand what I'm trying to tell you, I didn't know who I was in Christ, everything that I would read or every message that I would hear that was truth, that convicted my behavior, it condemned me instead of lifting me. It wasn't God's fault. It was my fault because what I would do, and it's what most people do, when I would hear a message that confronted my behavior, I would then decide that I would change. Well, I'm going to change. I'm going to change. Well, that'll get you so far. But willpower, no matter how much willpower you have, and I'm a pretty strong-willed woman, so I've got a lot of it. Willpower can still only get you so far and eventually you'll just give up and go back to doing the old thing. Only God can change our heart. We can maybe control some of our behavior. And I'm not necessarily saying it's wrong to do that, but you got to understand that you need to be changed from the inside out. It can't be from the outside in. It has to be from the inside out. So. What we should do anytime we hear any kind of a message that convicts us or we read anything in the Bible that convicts us of sin in our life, we need to just simply agree with God. You're right, God. I agree. That's something in my life that needs to change. And furthermore, even if the devil tries to accuse you of something, like you have really got a big mouth, you need to say, I agree. We are for a change in agreement. I do have a big mouth and I need to change, but guess what? God is working in me right now and every day I'm getting better and better in every way. Now I want you to listen to mama today, okay? I'm old enough to be most of your mother, so I'm taking liberty here. <laughs> these are the things that you need to begin to do these things at home. It's not good enough just to come and hear me tell you about it. You need to begin to actively confess the Word of God out loud, knowing who you are in Christ and what belongs to you. When you have a condemning thought, something that's making you feel guilty and bad, you need to remember there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. God's not condemning me. He sent His only Son to die for me. Jesus isn't condemning me. He's the one who did die for me. So the devil is either doing it or I'm doing it myself. And some of us are so good at it that the devil doesn't even need to bother with us. We'll just do it all for him. I spent so long feeling guilty that I didn't feel, I didn't feel right if I didn't feel wrong. Feeling wrong and thinking that something was wrong with me was just my life. That's just the way that I was. 
And I tell you what, I don't even know how to tell you how wonderful it is to enjoy the kind of freedom that is available to us in Christ. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. But the truth has to be faced. And that's part of what I want to talk to you about today is, is we need to get enthusiastic about the correction that we get from God. Not have an attitude, oh boy, one more thing wrong with me. My gosh, I never can do anything right. I mean, I went through a period of time in my life where I did not think that there was a worse human being on the face of the earth than me. I did not see how anybody could have anything more wrong with them than I did. And I did not know the things that I'm telling you today, and it was actual torment for me. I remember one of the first times that God really confronted me. I was praying for Dave to change. <laughs> and I mean, I was into it. Oh, God! God, you got to change Dave, God. God, I ask you to work in Dave's life. I mean, I was so busy. I was pounding on the floor. I mean, I was into this prayer. <laughs> and it was almost as if the Holy Spirit kind of shook me into reality. Uh, Joyce, Dave is not the problem. And I remember distinctly thinking, well, who is? can't be me. I mean, that's how deceived we can get. And so when you first begin to be confronted with truth, it can be pretty upsetting. I cried for three days. God took three days to show me what it was like to live in a house with me. And it wasn't very pleasant. I've had many, many, many other visits from God like that since then. I've learned now to really appreciate them and not to despise them. I don't want to stay in the dark. I want God to teach me. I want to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. How many of you want to be convicted by the Holy Spirit when your behavior is wrong? My goodness, it just almost nauseates me to think about how I used to treat people and didn't even know I was doing it. I'd become so hardened, so hard-hearted, from the things that had happened to me in my life. And even from dead, dry religion, religion will make you hard-hearted. And, and in that religious state, even when, when I would do a little something right, then that even made me think I was that much better than everybody else. And so now I could be critical and judgmental toward them. But I'm thankful now. I honestly believe that I cannot mistreat anybody. I mean, even without knowing it. I mean, immediately I get convicted. And I appreciate that more than anything because I think one of the things, now you listen to me, one of the things that I believe hurts God more than anything is when we mistreat one another. He just doesn't like it if we mistreat his kids. So. Now let's talk some about spiritual maturity and see how we think we can change. I spent years and years and years and years trying to change myself. If I ask you today, what are you working on about yourself? Most of you could tell me. Well, I'm trying to do this. Well, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. Well, what if I said to you, how about if you give up some of your trying and replace it with a lot more believing? Now, what do you think you'd say to that? Well, what do, you, what do you mean? I have to try. Well, we're all going to make an effort, but it has to be a spirit-led and a spirit-filled effort. It has to be something that we do with God, not something we try to do apart from God so we can then think that we deserve God's blessings. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I couldn't control my mouth without God's help. There's no way that I could do that. And I tried so hard to keep my mouth shut. And I would hear these messages about the mouth and how important it was. And, you know, there was a lot of teaching going on back then about wives being submissive to their husbands. And, you know, I'm not saying that it wasn't good teaching, but I was nowhere even close to wanting to do that. I didn't even know how to spell submit, let alone do it. <laughs> and so I was always mouthing off to Dave, mouthing off to Dave. And so I would, I would hear one of these messages. I think, that's it. I, I am going to go home and I am going to 
shut my mouth. And so that's exactly what I would do. I would go home and I wouldn't say anything for two or three days. I would just go, mm-hmm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And then pretty soon, day over, the kids would be, what's the matter with you? What is your problem? And then I'd get madder. That, that's it. They don't like it if you talk. They don't like it if you don't talk. I don't care what you do. You can't make people happy. Okay, now look at me. The flesh only knows how to be extreme. <laughs> we're either all this or we're going to fix it by doing all of that. And what we have to do is go to God. Boy, I can save you some agony if you'll listen to me today. You go to God. If anything I say today convicts you, if anything that I have said convicts you, and you know, eh, boy, I, I, yeah, I really got a problem with that. Well, what you need to do is go home and say, Lord, this is what I heard in this conference. These are the things that I really felt that you convicted me about. Because it's not me convicting you. It's the Word of God that's convicting you. And God, I agree with you and I want to change. But I can't change if you don't change me. I can try to control some of my behavior, and I will do that if you'll help me, but I can't change inwardly if you don't change me. That's the first thing you do. The second thing you do is make a commitment to study the Word of God in the area where you're having a problem. Listen, most of you have a medicine cabinet at home. If you have a headache, you don't go to the medicine cabinet, get out a Band-Aid and stick it on your head. If you cut yourself, you've got some kind of antibiotic cream. You don't go get an aspirin and stick it in the cut and squeeze it together. We've got enough sense to know what kind of natural medicine to take for what ails us. Why don't we have enough sense to know how to take the medicine of God's Word in the area where we need help? If I'm having a huge problem with impatience, it's not going to do me any good to study the 10 steps to success. If I've got unforgiveness, it's not going to help me to study miracles and prosperity. Because here's the thing. The Lord is our physician. And His Word is the medicine for our souls, our emotions, our minds, but you have to take it. If I had a headache and I put two Tylenol in a bag and laid it on top of my head, <laughs> how many of you know I would keep my headache? I have to take it. I have to swallow it. It has to become part of me. Well, here's what happens sometimes when you're just letting everybody else spoon feed you the Word. It just sits right up here. And we get so full of head knowledge that we actually become haughty and proud of ourselves because of everything we think we know. When I tell you to turn to the first scripture I'm going to have you turn to, if you happen to have that underlined and colored in in red or pink or yellow, you're going to feel a little proud of yourself. <laughs> Yes, I know that one. <laughs> you, now, come on, if you're honest, have you ever opened up your Bible sitting next to somebody in church and it was a page that was just, I mean, colored, underlined, and you just kind of secretly hoped that the person next to you would notice how spiritual you are? Come on, I have. Way back when, I thought I was spiritual. <laughs> you know, you can turn your whole Bible into a coloring book. That doesn't mean you know anything. It can all just be sitting on top of our head. We've got enough information. We need revelation. many more times is somebody going to have to tell you to forgive your enemies before you get around to doing it? Yes. 
You've been to the seminar, bought the t-shirt, got the CDs, <laughs> got the scriptures underlined, but who are you mad at? Some of you came here today with the person you're mad at. You didn't talk to him all the way here. You jumped and shouted during, I am not forgotten, I am not forgotten. I think that song could come close to being one of my very favorites. I don't care how bad you feel, you can't be still when you sing that song. <laughs> oh, we're just so happy. Yay, Joyce is preaching. Praise the Lord. And you get back in the car with that person, we'll talk to them all the way home. I know, because I used to do that. Dave and I'd fight all the way to church, but the first greeter we saw at the door, oh, praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. And I can even remember during worship, with hands lifted up, singing the words on the overhead. Because you know, you don't really have to think to do that. If he thinks I'm cooking him anything to eat today, he's got another thing coming. But I had it underlined. Is anybody getting the message? So we don't need more information, we need revelation. So anything that convicts you and you know is an issue in your life, you don't have to feel condemned about it. You just say, I agree with you, God, I'm a donkey and I'm in the ditch again. And I'm asking you to get me out and I'm asking you to help me not to get in that ditch again. Change me. And then as you wait on God to change you, patiently, without frustration, without condemnation, without self-hatred, without self-rejection, are you listening to me? Because if you're waiting on God with all that stuff, you're not waiting in faith. But if you're waiting on God, Simply saying, I know what I'm not, God, and that's why I need Jesus. I want to change with all my heart. I want to change, but I know I will never change if you don't change me. God, if you don't do it, it's just not going to get done. And we're almost afraid to do that because it seems like we all have this little demon that sits on our shoulder. Oh, what are you going to do? 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 I mean, I did, I, I did everything. I did until I almost died. I tried. My gosh, you're looking at a woman who tried. Nobody tried any harder than me. But you're not going to get victory apart from letting God help you. Because either he gets the glory or it doesn't get done. Amen? Either he gets the glory or it doesn't get done. And even after you have a victory, you still have to keep trusting him to keep you in that victory. Every single day, trust in God, trust in God, trust in God. You study in the area where you need help. You keep waiting on God. I believe the best way to get from the donkey stage to the eagle stage is exactly what it says in Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Do you know what the word wait means there? It means to wait expectantly. Expecting God to show up at any minute. Waiting is not just this torturous period we go through. It's an exciting period of saying, I, God, I believe you're working. I believe that you're working. The Word of God has power in it. Every word that God speaks is alive and full of power, according to Hebrews 4.12. Every word that God speaks is like a sharp two-edged sword. It divides soul and spirit, 
it has power inherent in it to make the changes in our life that need to be made the Word of God is the seed of God and seeds always produce fruit if they're planted and watered now how many of you understand what I'm saying okay now I'm going to tell you something. Look right here. If you will not study on your own, trusting the Holy Spirit to take that word and work it in you and change you, I don't care how much you hear other people. It can never take the place of your own personal private time with God. You have to get with God if you're going to have the victory that you need. Amen? John chapter 15 teaches us that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. And you know, that includes trying to change ourselves. We need to trust God to do that work in us that only He can do. Many times we're fighting with ourselves and struggling with ourselves you need to realize that you're okay and you're on your way. You love God, He loves you, you're on a journey and God's gonna help you get to the end of that journey. Conditions of what we saw here just absolutely broke Shelly and Maya's heart. There was no water. People would have to walk for hours and hours one way to get dirty water. There was no education. And so we started planning and, and asking how can we make a difference in this. And so today we're here and we have just dedicated one of five wells that we've dug in this area. And these are not just wells. They're solar paneled with pumps and they have reservoirs of 10,000 liters and they will just change this whole community. And we've dedicated a primary school that will, will do grades one, two, three, four, five. So we've literally changed this entire community uh, here in Tanzania. And we just couldn't do it without you. So we're so grateful. The people are so appreciative. And we say thank you and God bless you.